On this episode of Doing the Most, we're bringing you our recipe for the perfect Acerglin. Homemade brews and various artists, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. Now on the internet, I have heard this pronounced both Acerglin or Acerglin. I think Acerglin is the less silly sounding thing to say dozens of times throughout this video. So that's where we're going. But the truth of the matter is an Acerglin is a maple mead and ours is made with two different types of honey as well as a full gallon of Vermont maple syrup in primary. Now, if you ask the experts, they will tell you that fermenting maple syrup in primary is a waste of time and money. They literally will tell you that you are burning $100 bills. And I've just not found that to be the case. We tested this one quite a bit including starting with a pure maple wine where the only fermentable sugar in there was maple syrup. And I found, at least with using QA23 as my yeast, that the maple flavor was very well retained. Very well retained. And then when you back sweeten it, it just hefts it up even more. So in developing this recipe, we started with a maple wine and then we brewed three different batches of this recipe, making minor tweaks along the way to figure out exactly what works. So here, we're gonna show you exactly what works. Let's take a look at our recipe. The ingredients for the ace are six pounds of buckwheat honey, one gallon of real maple syrup, three grams of wine tannin, spring water to five gallons, and QA23 yeast. In secondary, we'll be adding four ounces of medium toast American oak chips for two weeks, as well as the zest of one medium orange for two weeks. Then we will stabilize and back sweeten with two pounds of rich honey. So with our giant funnel, we will get our buckwheat honey in the carboy. This is buckwheat honey from Mill Creek Honey, and they're my favorite place to get buckwheat honey from. It's so good. Really, really high quality buckwheat honey. And then of course, I'm doing a little bit of a taste and sniff on a previous batch so I can make sure I know exactly where I'm at. And we'll put in our maple syrup. Yummy. We tested two different kinds of maple syrups in our recipe testing. We got some really nice maple syrup from Vermont, and we also got some pretty bougie maple syrup from New Hampshire. And it's hard to say based on very minimal testing which is the better maple syrup. There's a lot of debate out there online about which maple syrups are best from which parts of the world, but we really enjoyed the maple syrup from Bard Woods in Vermont. And so that's what we ended up using in this, and that's what I'd recommend to you. It's available for not an outlandish price on Etsy. So the maple syrup goes in on top of that buckwheat honey, and we'll top it up with our spring water to five gallons. In goes our powdered wine tannin, making sure to get every little particle in there and give it a nice swirl. Then we're gonna be pitching QA23 yeast. This yeast performed really well with maple and I was really pleased with how well the maple flavors were retained throughout fermentation. Now I wanna point out again that we used QA23 for every single one of these ferments because it treated the maple really well every single time. So I didn't really feel the need to change it up by changing the yeast variable in these recipe tests. And our gravity on these batches tended to bounce between 1.111 and 1.113. So our fermentable sugars in primary are buckwheat honey and maple syrup. Then after stabilizing in secondary, we're back sweetening with a more neutral but still rich honey. So you're getting all those dark molasses and malt notes from the buckwheat honey. You're getting that butteriness and that kind of breakfast kind of vibe from the maple syrup. And then in secondary, all that's being elevated by another big punch of honey. So what that results in is a nice, well-balanced honey profile that stands up solidly against the maple profile. They kind of balance each other out. We used a Tosna 2.0 nutrient schedule. 
basically using Fermato in four different measured additions. For more information on proper yeast nutrition, check out the link in our description of this video. But I like to use the batch builder calculator because it does all the math for me. And before we rack that off into secondary, it's gonna spend a couple weeks on oak. So of course we have tannin in primary and we also have some tannin that's carried in there by the maple syrup itself because it comes from trees, it comes from maple trees. So the maple syrup is gonna carry a little bit of that wood tannin in it as well. That said, we found that adding some oak in secondary complemented those flavors and particularly the vanillin profile in American oak we went with a medium kind of medium heavy toast American oak works really well to kind of level out the flavor profile and smooth everything out so not only do you have those rich honey flavors and those strong buttery maple flavors but you've got a little bit of like a toasty vanilla flavor kind of in the middle so it forms a little bit of a triad of those nice, rich, desserty flavors. So let's get our American oak and orange zest in the carboy. At this point in my home brewing career, I'm fairly comfortable just tossing dry oak right into my fermenter. But if you look around for advice online, you'll see the best practice is usually to boil it in some water for a few minutes and then drain it and add it or soak it in a neutral grain alcohol. Both of these practices are meant to sterilize the wood before it goes in. But for this recipe, I just chucked it in dry direct from the manufacturer and it's a fairly high alcohol mead. So I wasn't super concerned about bad buggies getting in there on the wood. I zested this orange directly into the funnel because I felt like that was probably the easiest way to go about it. And we're using a very fine zester here and the link to that zester will be in the description of this video. So apologies in advance to my friends over at Genus Brewing. I sent them a bottle of my first batch of Acer Glen because I wanted to send them the smoothest one that I had, but it is by far not the most complex version of this recipe. What we found was that adding one medium orange worth of orange zest, just finely zested right off the orange, adds a note of complexity without really adding any orange flavor. It just gives you something in there that makes you go, huh. That's deep, That's that's got layers. Now I tried this also with two oranges worth of zest and that was too much. While I think the orange zest flavor in that batch will eventually age out and calm down, initially at bottling, it was pretty zesty and it was zesty in a way that I felt like competed with the maple syrup. So one medium orange worth of zest in a five gallon batch. The oak chips and the orange zest will live in there for a couple of weeks before you rack it off. Then, after two weeks, it's time to get it into secondary. So I'm just siphoning here into a cleaned and sanitized carboy. And don't throw out that oak, it's great for smoking meat. We chose to stabilize this mead with potassium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate so that we could back sweeten with honey, which is a fermentable sugar. I wanted the ABV to be where it was because I didn't want this to be too much in like a whiskey kind of profile of flavors. I wanted it to taste like a desserty kind of wine. So I wanted the ABV to be at a very specific point, which meant if I add more fermentable sugars, it's probably going to keep fermenting. So we chose to stabilize. If you didn't want to stabilize this, theoretically you could back sweeten with erythritol instead of using chemical stabilizers, or you could back sweeten at bottling and then and pasteurize the bottles. But I can't recommend trying either of those because I didn't do that in any of these four batches that we were testing this out with. So kind of core to this recipe is stabilizing and back sweetening with honey. In goes our potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite to get this stabilized. Those two products are just gonna keep the yeast from synthesizing and reproducing. And now that it's stabilized, we're back sweetening with honey. Any rich honey will work well for this. I'm using gallberry in this video, but there are plenty of options out there that would complement the maple flavors in here really nicely. In trying different honeys to back sweeten this, our favorite ended up being alfalfa honey, but orange blossom honey was also really nice for back sweetening this. What you really want is a kind of neutral, but also rich honey to back sweeten with. So the richness of your back sweetening sugars is there to amplify the other rich flavors in the mead. 
I also added Sparkaloid, which is a hot mix fining agent. So that's one tablespoon of Sparkaloid into some boiling water, and that's going directly into secondary as well. This just binds to the waxes and proteins and other things that are still in the brew and helps them fall out of suspension, giving you a clearer mead. A couple weeks later, the sparkaloid had done its job and all the stuff had dropped to the bottom, leaving us with some crystal clear mead. So I got that bottled up in some 750 milliliter and 375 milliliter bottles. I used number nine corks on these bottles for a nice tight fit because some of these I wanna age for a few years and see how they develop. And now we get to open it up. That is exactly the color you want in this brew. It's like a bronze, copper, rust sort of color that really kind of exemplifies maple syrup. Excellent. You pick up just a little bit of the zest on the nose, but the nose is also smooth and buttery. You can tell that this isn't like a bright, acidic brew. It's, it's definitely something that is in that rich, kind of luscious dessert kind of realm. It definitely smells like mead on the top of the glass, but it's not a, a real punch in the face set of aromatics on this. That's really excellent. You've got that butteriness of the maple which is a thing that really surprised me when we made the initial batch, the maple wine, was just how rich and buttery and soft and smooth the maple wine was. Like it's just, it's a smooth drinker and it's just creamy and decadent. And a lot of that comes through with this recipe, but also you get those honey flavors. There's that slight touch of tartness or pungency that you get in a buckwheat honey. Buckwheat honey just has a really bold character about it, which is nice because it doesn't get hidden in here with the other ingredients. And then, like I said, that orange zest just kind of hangs around, kind of tethering the other flavors together. And this is sweet. Y'all know that I typically don't like sweet drinks, but something like this that's intended to be a dessert beverage like it really demands that sweetness. This is really exceptional as is. I'm very proud of this one. This one was very expensive to develop, very time consuming to develop. Each batch has had to age for a while so I can kind of understand where the flavor profile is after everything kind of calms down and mellows out and ties itself together in the bottle. Even as summer approaches and I've been out fishing every weekend and it's been warm, I can still appreciate this drink for what it is. But I think around wintertime when it's cold and everyone's all bundled up and you're sitting around the fire singing Christmas carols, this is going to be really lovely. And if you start it around now, it's going to be pretty great by that time. I'm very, very happy with this, and I'm thankful that I'm happy with this, given just how much time and effort went into developing this recipe. And I also feel a little bit accomplished that I was able to put together a recipe where I got to ferment the maple syrup in primary instead of just back sweetening with it. You can find us on Instagram and Pinterest at Doing the Most Okay. We've got a website, we're on Twitch every Saturday, and of course we have a Discord server at discord.doingthemost.org. I'm curious what iterations of the Acerglin you have made, uh, particularly if you've paired it with blueberries. I would love to hear your experience on that. That might be my next foray into this. So if you've brewed with maple syrup, please leave a comment and let me know what you did. I'm always curious to hear what other people are up to. Until next time, happy brewing and <laughs> happy holidays. I'm not tired, you're tired.